We're back for Series 8 of the Hidden London Hangouts. Today we're at a station which opened in 1871. A station synonymous with its neighbouring exhibition centre. A station that's seen a great deal of change in its life. Today we're at Earl's Court Station. In this week's episode... Chris has yeah. relinquished control today, guys. Ooh. Too many notes, if you know what uh. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not a, that's not a wall. Oh. And here is your surprise. Oh. 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 I didn't expect that, did ya? Oh my goodness, it's huge. What's that well, those opening credits, so they <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to Series 8 of the Hidden London Hangouts. We had a message from Siobhan, she said, Come on guys, life without the Hidden London Hangouts is killing me, hurry back please. Or, have my premature demise due to boredom on your hands. Love and kisses the four of you, we are back at Earl's Court today. I don't do this alone, I've got fantastic people from the London Transport Museum and indeed my friends. First of all, Mr Christopher Nix, Series 8, welcome back, you look like you're on safari. Watch out. Uh, yeah, well, it's been great having a break. Uh, we really needed to recharge our exploring batteries after uh, quite an epic Series 7, I think. So here we are, back to do some more. Good stuff. She's off the big screen. Now she's onto a little screen, YouTube screens. It's the gorgeous City Holloway. Hi, Siddles. Hello. I know, there's a bit of safari theme going on here with me and Mr Nick. Uh, Mr Nick, we've got sort of... We're, we're, we're ready to explore. I love this. And thankfully, keeping the sartorial end up, Laura Hilton Brown. She's a special little tiger with a moquette there. Welcome back. Tiger, I like it. Mm. Um, it's a while since I've been sat in this chair with my ironing board up and my iPad on and my lovely laundry rack behind it. Um, it's good to be back, but it does feel a little bit strange. <laughs> OK, without further ado, let's get down and dirty, as we always do on these episodes. We went for a little look around Earl's Court. We are dangerously close to a beautiful pub, <laughs> but we're here to talk about a tube station, aren't we? Yeah. We are, and it's one that's mm, been there for quite a while, but not in its original, in this form that we have it today. Uh, 1871 was the first arrival of a station here, uh, on a route that previously just went from Gloucester Road straight through to West Brompton. But we put a relatively small station here uh, to begin with, quite a humble beginning, wasn't well, it? Mostly City? because um, the local residents didn't want a station. This is kind of becoming a bit of a theme in <laughs> South Kensington, Kensington and Chelsea. Um, they didn't want one, but so they built a very small one, very moderate one, so it wouldn't kind of disturb the local residents too much. But that little funny. station didn't last long, did it? It didn't. Uh, 1875, uh, it burnt down or at least it was badly damaged by fire. Yeah. And it used to be just on the opposite side of the road to the, uh, the station today. Yeah. Uh, so 1878, a new station was built. Mm, the one we have behind us now? Well, this has got some uh, interesting things on there which show at least the modifications. If you look on the right hand side, Great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway, well that didn't arrive until 1906, 15th yeah. of December. Uh, so, we know that there were some interventions between them and actually that that station design that we see today is by hw ford uh, an architect we haven't talked Never about talked before. before it's quite a similar style to leslie, leslie green, green. Though, yeah it with does those half moon windows you on know, the front yeah for a long time i thought it was like a modified version of a green station because of the half moon windows and the flat roof and everything but it's not. It's but you can also event. tell, I mean, the design obviously looks quite early, but you know it's before the 1950s because Earl's Court doesn't have an apostrophe on it. And that wasn't standardised yeah, on the key. tube until 51. Well, you know what it also reminds me of? Uh, Fulham Broadway Station has a very similar design, probably by the same guy. Now, when you talk about um, the Central London Railway stations that were built, was it that sort of colour of exterior building? Those sort of biscuit tiles yeah. which you you'll still see at the building at Oxford Circus. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's very, very similar to that. It's interesting how there's a the colour tiles. palette of tube stations around that time, isn't there? It's probably materials available. Yeah. It's also interesting that these ones survive quite well because those central London tiles, to get that colour, they kind of half-fired them. 
so they they had a terrible problem of water ingress and the glaze bursting but these seem to have survived quite they well they are gorge and actually when you look at the design law because this is your forte completely you've got those lovely little bits of ornate work at the top also noting the if you look at the raw ironwork above the underground sign over the canopy there, it looks a bit like the original Metropolitan Railway crest. But what do you think of the look of it? Because it is gorgeous, isn't it? Do you know what? It's not as striking as that oxblood red tile, but I love that you've just described it as biscuit because mm. that really hits the nail on the head. And I do think I'm really enjoying the aesthetics and the look and the feel of the exterior. I like the mix of the tiles and the mix of the design and how it looks. I am really, I'm finding it quite beautiful. Those green tiles that we've seen before, they look quite similar to the kind of ones that were on the early district line, yeah. say Mark Lane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah they're beautiful. really beautiful shades of green. So I think overall, very handsome station. It does have some bits that you can see in plain sight uh, as being parts of original fabric of the station, but also surprisingly to some, there are some disused bits to shall have a look at. Shall we head in? Well. So, shall Time we? to go. Right. impressive station when you walk in, isn't it? Do you know, it reminds me of a preserved railway station. You can oh, almost yeah. imagine a steam train yeah. chuffing Tooting through here. Yeah, tooting. I feel like it's just so big for two lines. Yeah. yeah, it's enormous. Like Covent Garden Flower Market or something, isn't it? Yeah. It's a massive place. Now, normally, we have a massive clock dangling down from the ceiling, but today it's pushing this up. This one's stood on its end. Yeah. <laughs> stood up. There's so many stations on this line. It's giving me a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> There's yes. loads. There's too many. I mean, this is, historically, on, yeah. This is a sticker as well. This is a stuck on one. Well, there's been much change, of course. You've got things like the Elizabeth line. So, um, so the clock you mentioned, I'm just going to single that out because wow. it is a particularly nice self-winding clock. Alex saw the clock first, I think. I yeah, always see the clock first. Yeah. And it's a big one. It's nice a copper massive bezel, one. classic one. You'll see them. It is beautiful, isn't it? it? So you mentioned that they're normally a dangler. Yeah. And this is like shot Kennington, right up. For a example, a sticky uppy. Yeah. This is a sticky uppy. Well, I'm glad we've the rinsed one. the joy out of that <laughs> joke. Um, enough I've now, say enough. Also, if you guys look around, the mount on which it's sitting is like really ornate and beautiful. So like very true. Very good um, bit of raw iron work there. Oh, and there's some there's a little sort of like a little sid plate there that says clock. Yes. Click yes. 09. So the other thing which I really love about this platform is that it's got train describers on it. So those blue and white stained glass block boxes which tell you where the next train is going to. And they're really, have a little look. They're really well, popular as well because they when oh, they were gotcha. out of service, there was loads of talk on interest groups and Facebook about where have the, board, where have the boards gone at Earl's Court? Sorry. They are, they are uh, they, they were originally fitted. Now these ones have been taken away and refitted. So they're now driven by modern systems, but they used to be driven by really quite uh, primitive but amazing telegraph systems. We've got exam a working really? example of that telegraph? at our depot at Acton. Wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, it sort of transmitted bit code down a, down a telegraph wire it's really cool. to the next station. Never knew yeah. That. yeah. The things, things you things. learn on these episodes. And of course, from up that. here, this is one of two entrances. There's another one on the other side of the road. And but well below ground, we've got the Pickley Dickley line, haven't we? We yeah. have. And there are so many different places that you can go to Sorry. from here. Aren't so look at all this lot. I know, so many branches We've as well. Kensington it's the only, Olympia. It's Richmond, the only tube, tube line that crosses the river like several times. Anyone got a favourite station on this eastbound line? That one, There's many to choose from. That one's got a bit of a soft spot, really, because that was where I went to university, ah. Temple, I went to King's. I like Temple too. We should do that at some point. There you yeah. go. It's definitely Excited. worth a visit. So You've got this incredibly complicated set of interchanges taking place here where you can go off to all of these different places I was just thinking there's a, there's a favourite of mine on that platform which is the one above the train indicator telling you which side is leaving first 
because of course all of the branches end here. Well, I mean, not all of yeah, them, yeah. but you know. And yeah, I, because I, when I used to use this station daily, I, you'd kind of get to Earl's Court and you'd try to crank your neck to see if the one that was on already on the platform was leaving before this one. I'm really but, interested at this station as well because it is, it's, I only ever come here really when the exhibition centre was open. I don't come here anymore. I don't really change here anymore. And it was one of those stations that I always just went through it and uh, very fast, like mm. the fastest route through it. And there must be secret spaces because it's a station that's undergone so much change over time. There are, and, and this end of the station <coughs> still has that kind of old look to it. But of course, where we'll finish is over at the other entrance to the station, which is a much, much more modern look to it. Uh, the exhibition centre has, of course, been swept away in recent years. Uh, but we still have that entrance over on that side. I think it'd be really nice now that we've had a look at the subsurface level yep. to um, maybe use an old bit of infrastructure to get down to Piccadilly the Piccadilly line. line. Yes, because unusually for, you know, when we did Gloucester Road, remember, they had the district line building and then they had a Leslie Green building right next to it. But here they actually integrated it into the existing fabric of the building. So there's no telltale sign. I'm getting outside. some Gloucester Road vibes though, to yeah. be fair. I've mentioned that before. Yeah. 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 Not surprisingly, but our first perhaps unexpected find in public space is just beneath these stairs. Come on, tour guide, take, take us. To the take stairs us. we go. Take us, take us. Do you know what? I didn't even know this existed. Mm. I had no I'll join idea. You. I didn't either. And this is a spiral. Yep. Right. It okay. is. Only 83, so we it's love not spiral, particularly one eh? of the not one of the deeper ones. But there's uh, real joy to behold down here. Ooh, oh, even look, look at, at this, this guys. railing here. Yeah, it's that? yeah and it's, it's got got to it, hasn't continues it? here. So oh, this got, is nice. Oh, no, I touched it when I do nice that. old railing. This so, is really cool though. Look, it's, it's got that huge. twisted raw iron thing that goes on at the at the original spirals. So perhaps the most obvious thing, uh, aside from your lovely twisted mesh there, is the tiles. The tiles survive here like nowhere else uh, yeah. in public view because they've all had modern replicas put in. And as ever, I think these originals are much, much more nuanced than the new ones. Mauve. And actually, they are so much nicer in their old colour than they are in the replicas on the platform, because I think the platforms are really drab. They're kind of washed out. Yeah, it's really drab. They've got a very flat colour, as always, on these replica tiles. They're almost, they're kind of close to Caledonian Road. That's a that's a mauve station as well. But if you look over here, we've got some anomalies. We've got a very minty colour as well as the, the green. That so that's see. a replacement, is it? They've just well, been touched in. You're going to see a mix on the way down. Actually, you're going to see more of the minty green, I think, than the dark green. No but question, I'm yeah. Resting this, so there's steps up here. So this would have all just been closed because these are clearly modern ones. Oh, can we, do we have a key for that? So is this the original entrance to the Piccadilly line station? Yeah. And then so we're basically just going, we're going down and down and down. Yeah. Well, there we are. Perfect. Down and down Love and down it. and down. And also, yeah, there's a little bench stack there in the middle, but... Which has been cut, cut off. off yeah. uh, oh, curtailed. Have a look, yeah. Could you just... Shall we? I don't really want to do too much of that. Ooh. That's a long way down. Uh, for a short spiral yeah. staircase, it looks... It looks further than... It probably yeah, is. Weird. Well, we'll be heading down there shortly. Mm. Right. Mm. Should we have a look up there, then? Yeah, let's see if we've got the, got the key for that no. door. Yeah. Let's have a look. She's, She's got, got the key in the secret I today. Feel like City's got the uh, excitement level for this one. She's got the dun, key. Dun, dun. Ooh, there we go, there, my darling. It's open. Ooh. It's, it's, it's quite plain, isn't it? But unmistakably yeah, public original stairs. stairs from a station. In fact, are they, are they look, metal? they've got those. Oh, they are. They're the proper cast iron treadwork. You don't see those very often. Barbican London. That's yeah. Like. Can you um, see that? Yeah. That's, that's tremendous. Very, very unusual to see those. So this, would, this sort of shell, this fiberglass shell has been put on later to kind of provide a, a, a corridor. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's outside, basically turning it into a Wait, fire Chris, panel. Light up. Light up. Light up. So, so yes, a nice little find, and they've survived because they're in a very dry space. Quite often they corrode out, but uh, 
nice to see a survivor. Brilliant. Should we, we go down? down? Took yeah. the stairs. After you, madam. Your tile queen. I like it. I like this combo. Not so much the, the paler, mintier, the more... No, that's um, bad luck, because I think you're about to see the majority of it is there. Yeah, well, you can no, see it. <laughs> it's I like... Oh, look, nice, look, there's a change here. Do you there see? There is actually... Those are neither the strong minty stuff that we've seen there, which looks modern in retrospect, nor is it the green. They are their own thing. And this has a nice. bluer tinge to it, yeah. pale blue tinge. So, so just while we're here, you've got the more modern stairs which have been added in here. So Pleasure. this is new stairs into an old shaft. That's right, yeah. But the tile is original, which is lovely. When that happens normally, Nixie, you can see that there's a gap between this kind of structure mm -hmm. and the original thing. Is that normal? Do you normally leave a gap there? Yeah, so when they put in new stairs, they'll just separate them off from the wall to stop that original problem of the, the water getting in and corroding Fine. the structure. Nice, so, yeah. quite normal. Down we go. Sherbet limes. Oh. <laughs> Are they sherbet limes? I That's like the that. You know the ones with chocolate in them as well? Yes. Is that the sherbet I lime? I remember colour? those. Because I'm just, I'm liking that. It's a bit sort of cooking apple green in it, but as you say, the, the colours of modern tiles, and we find this all over the network, don't we guys? That when we get modern ones, they just they just they don't have that interest. Well, so this is and here we are. And yeah. it's like, that's the colour, that's the colour, that's the colour. There's no grading within the tiles. Mm. Yeah. They're just solid it's block colours. very flat colour, isn't it? But, um, oh, here we are. Now, we have another unusual feature here. One of only four stations that had this configuration. You might realise we've come down in between the platforms. So we've got the eastbound that side and the westbound just right coming on in. Right queue. Yeah. yeah. Hello, train. Nice breeze. There he is. And it's because they've got the space in the ground to do that, uh, they could put both, both the lift shafts and the spiral stair shaft between the platforms. So you go from ground to platform. Mm. Very unusual. Yep. Only three others that had this. Uh-oh. We've been to what? We've been to what? We've been to two, two out of... Well, now three. So we, this is three out of four. Your road. Your road. This one. Um... That no. is the other one, but we haven't, we haven't been, been there. there. So um, no, and no. the one next door to it? Nope. Oh, road? King's Cross. King's Cross, of course. Of course. Yeah. course. But we couldn't really see that in that episode because it's just that little bit off the Piccadilly line where we sort of had to duck under and find it. was a bit windy it. that yeah. day, wasn't it? Now, the, the other thing I've noticed about this, guys, and I really like this, is the, is the little curvature on this. This is curvature. I've never seen this before. It's very I've ornate, seen isn't that it? that style with the kind of, you know, that. But I've and never seen this. Also, you know, this is a nod to the, to, to the tiling scheme. Like we saw at Elephant and Castle, they've got that red, but then they've retiled the whole yeah. platforms. But here they've kept that kind That's of style. That's a good point, yes. It's that sort of green colour. I think it was yeah. Elephant and Castle where we actually noticed that that colour scheme thing that was, was going it, on. Yeah. Yeah. Because before that, it was, it was accidental. And now yeah. we've seen it. We've seen it everywhere. Now, of course, as well as the spiral stairs surviving, there's also one of the lift shafts is still in use. Ah. I think we should go and have a look at that. Um, just around the corner. All right, let's have a looky. Early courty. This is really interesting, right? Because this is obviously, like many other stations, this is a lift shaft, yep. lift entrances. But look, they've built it in and they've built it <coughs> in. Yeah. So much smaller lifts than yeah. they would have originally been. Yeah. How animated you, like you are today. They've built it in, in and, and up. In. And so how many shafts were there? So there were originally two shafts, each with two lifts, Dots. of course. And they would have been the Otis style lifts, 43 persons typically, trapezoidal in shape, but these much more compact ones don't need as much space, but they're faster. How many persons? Normally 43. 43. And interestingly, these ones uh, were a very early automatic lift system, which we know was experimented on at Warren Street. Do you remember when we did that yes. episode? Yeah. And they had a first automatic voice announcement to warn you to stand clear of the doors please oh. but these ones they decided they, they ran so fast they decided they needed to shorten the message so it was an early use of uh, photographic film with a photo cell to read the voice message and it used to say uh, please stand, cl uh, stand clear of the gates please 
and they scrubbed the bit that said please oh, and instead nice. of that to, to speed it up but instead of that it said uh, stand clear of the gates <laughs> <laughs> that was what the sound a it made. Sound. Yeah. No, it did not have a fart sound. <laughs> Which is sound. the opposite of being polite, isn't it? Really? Really? Yeah. I think he is. No, yeah, I, think I he want is. to know something because we've got more passengers coming. So, lift three, lift four. Where's one yeah. and two? One and two. Well, one and two. Oh, just oh, right here. All right, let's do it. I like that. All that extra detail. And of course, this all makes sense now because the other side we saw that sort of longish corridor into the lift we've got the same here so in other words we've got two doors into the same two lifts haven't we now yeah. mm. and this is just like york road if you remember that where you've got that atrium between uh, the one at york road i think is prettier in and the way bigger. it's done yeah. it's bigger but you can see you would have had your entryway there and there but now there's equipment in there now we can't go into this bit because it's a CEI, yeah. <laughs> there is another oh. bit. Can we? He's corner. got a little sneaky key somewhere we didn't know about. And another secret. Exactly. Chris has yeah. relinquished control today, guys. So, I like these oh, doors. I've got the this key. is the oh, Yeah, I know, they're unusual, aren't they? A very heavy yeah, wooden they are. fire door. Oldie, but oldie looking doors. inside. Dun dun dun. Oh. Now we've got painted over oh, tiles. I like it. And uh and a light switch. All right. But check this Something out. Something smells. Yeah, oh, it does. I was going to wow. say fruity, but I've changed my mind. Fruity? Yeah. I'm not smelling fruit, love. So this is gorgeous. I'm going to step in. First of all, I have no sense of smell, which is today doing us all because you just went. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> didn't you? I've just Laura's had a moment. Gagging, I took too big a lungful. Why so is gagging? This so is funny. used for sto storing <laughs> cleaners equipment, so it has a. Too many it's notes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, you just hit on my absolute so, comedy crutch. Oh, so, uh, you don't want to focus on your crutch, This is so funny. So, anyway. what I love is, look down here, you've got poster <laughs> frames in the ceiling. So we have. Hey, Law, have a look at this poster <laughs> frame. Put He's trying to distract Laura from vomiting. Take your mind off your Someone's room. left an umbrella. And maybe we can uh, take a look at some posters that may have graced these yes, frames absolutely. back in the street. Yeah. Um, oh, but, John, why is that bricked up? Well, it's because all of this area has been modified and you've got equipment rooms, switch rooms, CRs and stuff like that within the space. Uh, so it's just been modified to do all of those functions. But this bit has been left to a store, clean as equipment. Original tiles there. Yeah, let's just Original take a look at these. Here. Have a butchers at that. And um, this would have just been a cross passageway between the two platforms, right? Uh, into the lifts, so right. the lifts would have been that way. Yeah. Now, I know we'd love to, but we can't go in there because no. of the equipment that's in there, right? Yes. No, that's right. And uh, so we've done the lifts at Earl's Court, but of course, Earl's Court got a first with something else, didn't it, that Did. replaced the lifts? Absolutely. In 1911, Earl's Court Station got the escalator. And is it not the case that a man with one leg tested it to prove how safe it was? Yes. Is this not folklore? This is so true. Bumper Harris, who was a one-legged engineer, stood, was ro rode on the escalator for a whole day on the first day of it opening to assure people that it was a safe mode of transporting awesome. themselves. And is the location of that first escalator still in use? It is. It is. It's where we'll go now. Now, before we go there, because it's going to be noisy when we go there, I'll just say this. There was something else unusual about those escalators. Now, uh, escalators run on a 30 degree angle, whereas back then they were using a design which I think had originated in Germany, where yeah. they, they had an angle of 26 and a half degrees. OK. So it's a slightly different angle shallower escalator. a shallower uh, escalator yeah. yeah sort of like yeah, yeah. yeah. and also um, they were kind of like a almost like a treadmill really yeah. so you didn't really have that platform that we have at the top at the bottom so you sort of had to kind of Whoop. go jump yeah. off it right. so it's in the same place Go Let's do it. Have you, it has a smell, by the way. The aroma I'm struggling with, so it would be good if we could. Let's depart. go. I'll go out last because I can't smell but a thing. The tiles have been lovely. Yeah. Can't smell a thing. Cannot smell a thing. So that was the spiral staircase that we went down first. Then we went into the lifts. These are the escalators that take us back up. The original location of those very famous escalators. Yeah. So um, this feels a lot shallower than most other escalators on the network. So they, they've kept the original 
25 and a half? 26 and a half. 26 I love and you guys. I never uh, thought I would be chatting about the gradient of an escalator well, and enjoying it as much as I do. It's only a few <laughs> degrees off, but it's enough to be noticeable, isn't yeah. it? Well, if you think about, like, you know, Hoburn or Angel, when you look up, it really feels like it's steep. Much and steeper also than the this. Elizabeth Line ones now, some of those are really steep. They, they are. feel really steep. Totty Court Road. Totty Court Road. Because, of course, the tar work here looks a little bit more reminiscent of the days of Charles Holden. Mm. Well, I mean, it's not just reminiscent of, it absolutely is. 1936, uh, there was a, a new set of uh, passageways and treatment done here. Uh, it was designed by Holden, implemented by Stanley Heaps. And it's the classic biscuit, light biscuit, and blue, which we've talked about at many other station refurbs in the 30s. Mm. The other thing is, if you're bustling through from the Piccadilly to the district, well, you'll normally just go straight up those stairs yeah. or down that passageway and up those stairs and not think twice about it. But there's another secret of this station. Before we, before we hit that secret, I'm going with digestive biscuit at the front, custard cream biscuit oh. here. Nice, yeah. See what nice doing? biscuit. <laughs> See what I would I'm agree doing. with your biscuit oh. analogy work there. I'm quite hungry now. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't have said that. Right. Anyway, back to the secrets. So, uh, the secret was uh, this, this re-envisaging of the station down here thought, well, if you've come up off, off the Piccadilly line and you're going to the exhibition, why don't we let you carry on down yes. this way without going upstairs? Yeah. So, should we head down that yeah, way? Yeah, let's do it. Interesting. I've never been down here, have you? I don't think I have. I was just trying to place then if I have. I'm going Gosh. with a nose. There's this a lot way, of little rooms way. around here, aren't there? A lot of space. Hmm. I feel like I've kind of done Elscott a bit of a disservice, really, by writing it off. Yeah. yeah. I think, I See, this is why I wanted to come here, because I knew it had some extra special secrets. Wait a minute. That's not a, that's not a wall. <laughs> Alex is all over it. Well, it, it is. Oh, but it looks first like glance, a door. Metal. Right. Yeah. First glance, you wouldn't notice it. But it is actually a continuation of the passageway. And did that, to lead, did that lead to the Ooh. exhibition centre? Oh. Well, stand by, because wow. you're not going to believe where this key is going to let you into. That's a fancy stand key. Stand back, stand back, we're going in. We're going in. OK, do you know, I don't think that one wants to play, so mm. let's try the other one. Hmm. There we go. Woo. Right, time to go in. <gasps> oh, it's a bit Euro trash, isn't it? Oh, oh whoa! <laughs> no way! Right, Shuts yes way. the front door. All right, eh? Oh, open the front door. This Look at this. This is amazing. This is pretty <laughs> blooming cool, isn't it? Oof. So, I mean, bright lights fault, by right? tube and bus. Oh, wait, There's I so much to go at. I mean, the posters that survive. I remember. We've used this at the museum, museum for museum? the Friday yeah. nights. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, yeah. it dates it because it's the old uh, Mayor of London logo. Yes. Uh, I like 2003. that. 2003. Yeah. That's really, I want to photograph that before That's we leave. That's quite handy, isn't how, it? Sorry, how, how long is and this? Then, well, I mean, the answer is as long as it needs to be to get it to uh, Enough. Earl's Court. Should we have the a old Special exhibition ticket hall. Oh, wow. Underneath there. So, I, so, I think it's time we uh, walk down and explore where this goes. Shall we? Uh, yeah, let's do on? it. It's, um, I mean, you, you imagine like the days of the ideal home show or something like that. Walking down here, imagining I'm going to buy um, a broom made of rubber tyres or a... a <laughs> rubber is, that, is that really yeah. ideal? Or one of those um, irons that you used to be able to do up. Do you remember you could iron clothes while they were standing up on... Uh, hangers and stuff like that. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Oh my god, I love the Ideal Home Show. Oh, you're talking about the Ideal Home Show? Yeah. Oh, I know that. Oh yeah, my yeah, god, yeah. this is absolutely freaky. Look at the bend on this tunnel. It goes down oh, and then yes, goes back like up again. And oh, hey, look at this. A, a young Graham Norton. A very young Graham Norton. Oh, 2003. Wow. I think Ruby Wax uh, next to him as well on the, uh, other, on the poster. Um, the but yeah, it sort of dips down and then goes back up again. What's it? love, Alex? Oh, wow. I remember not just I, used to, I used to clip these out of the I, I newspaper mean, and collect them. I mean, you would have thought that an equally valid thing would have been Love Is not riding nude on the tube, wouldn't you really? Well, yeah. <laughs> and it's a valid point. It's, it's, a, it's a child of its time, just to say. 
So this is now storage area, is it, for work I kit? Guess, yeah. Like this. So when did this corridor actually close? Uh, 2005. I think actually it was 2005. <laughs> There's a sign there that says rubble only, no bottles. Oh my goodness, it's huge. Well, there's the opening credits. So, they'd <laughs> <laughs> so you see why I wanted to come down here for the start of Series 8. I mean, yeah. This is rather special. This is bonkers though, isn't it? It's absolutely bonkers. And this is a bit about the lowest bit of this U-shaped... Tunnel, yeah, it, really? so it heads back up a bit. I rather like this kind of uplit ceiling. It feels quite yeah. central line extension, doesn't it? You kind does. of Moscow subway vibe. How are you feeling about the blue, guys? I do like Love the it. Blue. The blue. Always like that. And in that colour scheme, because we, we were talking about this upstairs, weren't we? The black was a poster frame. That's right. It's yep. used as a poster frame because yep. we always talk so about the blue and the biscuit, blue was for the border and the black was for the poster frames. You can see actually they've been resized. Yes. You see. Uh, now, there is one truly special thing which i haven't told you about which lives up at this end of the corridor oh are we okay. now under what would have been the I, the earls court exhibition center are we yeah you've just gone under the road, road basically yeah. look at the sign hang on something lives at the end of this yeah. corridor oh there's a different time isn't there yeah before uh, before we license buskers on the uh, on the underground a little photograph of that. I love buskers on the underground. Oh, me yeah, too. I do. Sometimes it really gives you that goosebump moment, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Of like the amazing kind of sound and the acoustics. Yeah, there was a guy at Baker Street the other day who was doing like gorgeous like violin. talented, yeah. yeah. And then moist here. Oh. No, it's like, it's like I bumped into something wet. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Say nothing. <laughs> Say nothing. Welcome to Series 8, everybody. <laughs> I suppose, Nixie, this is your uh, pièce de résistance, is it? <gasps> uh, it is. New bargain tickets. Some doesn't like Newton. It's, but the, it looks the, weird. That bullseye has not got the right proportions. No, it's not, is it? Ooh, the, the, yeah. Yeah, that's a Giraffe. weird, weird underground. Who will you see at the zoo? A silhouette. Oh, well, there's a lot of zoo pictures. Oh, oh look! Hey, look! We've got. Oh. To, do you remember? We've got one of those. Ah, at, where does uh, this remind you of? Yes. Anybody? Come on, Alex. Which, which dish are you stationed to? Or on the which, hill? Oh, London Houston, program? isn't it? No. Um, oh, it's Aldwych. It is. Well, Aldwych. No. Aldwych. <laughs> I don't believe all four of us have got that excited about a faded I, poster before. I'm also. These are no, probably, don't. I know I'm what you're going to say. I'm questioning the silhouette I know of the what giraffe. You're going to say, which... And I refuse. <laughs> oh, that's a nice. Um, that's yeah, a nice okay. annotation, you, isn't it? Wow. It. And here is your surprise. Oh, holy Whoa. moly. You didn't expect that, did you? Now this is a shut the front door. Right, now this is a how you start a new series of the Hidden London Hangouts. Wow. <laughs> this is really cool. Wow. Hail bronze. Hold on a minute, this is, this is a like Swiss sw cottage. Sw a Swiss cottage St. John's yeah. Woods. I couldn't, I couldn't so, even say it so quickly. So excited. If I remember correctly, these are MA type. So originally, because they were the very first escalators, those ones downstairs were A type. And then they were modified to MAs down there. Are they uplighter? Um, I think that's what these are. Brackets. Yep. So you would have had uplighter signs and probably two street and then two trains at the Do top. You know, maybe. this is remarkable. I'm going to lock right. Right. Oh, hello. I'm, I'm staying in tonight. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant. So, oh, 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 oh. We have wow. it in our collection. Wow. That's South so 74, that dates it pretty much. I yeah. love it when it dates it. What's really strange though about this, you know how we talk about, uh, David Stood right in front of the camera. told us about posters with the red surviving really well unfaded, but these were really faded, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but the yeah. thing is that they've been stripped back, yeah. I think, yeah, so, so other pe I think other things have been post pasted on top oh, of Oh, like this. over, yeah, like where they've peeled. So, a couple of other bits of detail before we dive oh. fully into the escalators. Curve tiles that they yeah. bothered to do at the end. I know we saw them back in the sofa, but they're really, really fancy the way they've done them. I would never have imagined <laughs> this would look like Line this. of really this fancy. Like, <laughs> really fancy. <laughs> really fancy, yeah. really fancy well, the way they've done that. I'm, I'm glad I managed to not spill the beans so you could have that surprise. Moment. Oh, this is super cool. This is like a proper we, secret tube are station. Are we allowed to walk up or is it too? Oh, yeah. Of course, we've done quite a few old school escalators. Uh, in recent series, think Alperton, where we got the, the wooden tread mm. ones. But here, 
Oh, look at these. Victorian I've never seen those before. London. You've got oh. the very fancy fluted bronze spikes to stop people sliding down the handrail. Also, this is metal, isn't it? It is. So these wooden So these have been changed out. Post 87? So, yeah, because these are this looks like anodized aluminium to me. And we have to explain 87 was when the King's Cross fire brought in a lot of changes to safety That's on the right. tube. And one of them was about taking wood off wooden escalators. That's right, yeah, it? getting rid of the wooden escalators and making them the metal. I can't believe this. This is I'm so I've got to hold on because I don't think I'm gonna fall down the stairs. This is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. 50p. I'm just taking, f taking shots of your butts, guys. Well, Lovely. you know, it's my best side, so... Would you like to see my rubber gloves? <laughs> oh, look! Look at that! I knew you'd love that Got one. premium bonds. Julie Chambers and her band. This is phenomenal, isn't it? Lovely. It almost looks like a set dressing, you know? It does. It looks like a half-built set. Or like a reconstruction, or something like that. Yeah. Do you know, it's... Uh, Hats off to you, Nixie. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I really fair. wasn't. God, didn't it get warmer? Well, there's well. still a few secrets I can keep. This is like the Mari Celeste. It's really weird because look, you've even got the ticket window. Yeah. I mean, assistance and tickets, all that. It's oh kind my of. Oh goodness. There's sort of like a. There's an eeriness to Chris, it. Chris, uh, not Chris, that's you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sid and Alex are a little bit like weirded out at the moment. They're feeling, they're feeling some, bit, some uh, energy, some vibes. I'm some loving the fact that we've gone very Blair Witch in the shooting <laughs> style yeah, here. It is. So uh, yeah. But look at this a whole gate line. I know. Well, you know, I was saying to <laughs> Laura and Alex, this feels quite apocalyptic, these sandbags. It does a bit, doesn't it? Because they're probably just stopping a, a leak. And you've it's got when these the wind blows. Riveted beams which show some oh, age. Oh, he's looking at the beams. Riveted beams. Didn't take long. It's a good, good guide for showing you the age of something. Now, I'm riveted. So I do want to want us to cross the gate line because there are two things I spot. I, I, I just spotted over there. Shall we? Yeah. Do it. All on, on the board. Look at this. Look at this. It says. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> just trips over the uh, sandbags. Beware, <laughs> even ghosts need valid tickets that on is, the underground. That is quality. Work. That is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, we're all going to tourist that one, aren't we? Yeah. Wait, Laura, that's very good. And also, guys, in the corner, Old map because look, the Jubilee line terminates at Charing Cross. Oh my goodness. Oh, first oh, and last it? trains. Look at this. Oh, it does. Oh, that is. That's a seriously good blast from the past. I yeah, mean, it's like we're name checking all of our tours on this. Wait, uh, and also, so <laughs> the DLR hasn't reached Cutty Sark and no. Deptford and everything. Uh, Greenwich and Deptford. So, what is that? That's like the 80s? So 83? Uh, look at the East London line. Oh, oh yeah. yes, of course it's still and the tube. We've got the Dotty, we've got the Dotty Jubilee line yeah. coming. Oh right, so, so that the, is it's so in that planning. is the that, 90s. That is 90s. It's probably yeah. mid 90s then. But I mean seriously, this is absolutely fascinating. Morning to Crescent. Oh yeah, yeah. now yeah. then that gives ah, a great way, does. doesn't it? It Open, does. reopens early 1998. So this could be what, mid 90s? Yeah, so early, early to mid 90s, in fact. So, yeah. How wow. fascinating wow. is that? Oh, I love this. Well, it's brilliant, but of course, we can't go out this way anymore. Uh, this isn't the most westerly e exit and entrance anymore. For that, we're going to have to jump to the Warwick Road entrance. Thank mm. you. So, the one that's got kind of a rotunda. That's it, yeah. Do we go down yes. the escalator again? We do. We'll see you there. Right. Do you know what? When we filmed on that day, this is the Instagram story I was putting together. It's a trail series eight, which we are now doing. So I just thought I'd show you that. I'm literally doing it as we walk around the station. Publish, gone. And here we are in the God, station. It's quite a long <laughs> so station. Like, I got some stuff to do this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> Lots of tunnels and passageways. It's very industrial looking. We were just saying it's a bit high gatey. Yeah, it's kind of that crittle window the, vibe. Uh, the, what window? Crittle kind of windows. Right? Mm -hmm. That's got to be a substation. Oh, donuts. And yeah, it's very much same, uh, same era, same designers as, uh, as that. 
Now, quite understandably, I've not been down here since the Earl's Court Exhibition Centre shut. So I'm not aware of the view that I'm going to see when I get here, because for me, it was always those big red letters, Earl's Court, often the Brit Awards. I used to go and be a producer at the Brit Awards. The Brit Awards were? Sometimes. It was, oh, there was loads of stuff happened at Earl's Court. And um, even the Royal Tournament. Do you remember the Royal Tournament with all the horses? You were the that person about there. town. God, he was a man about town. I do love this rotunda, though. Ooh. No, nice. I do love this rotunda. Um, inside, I think it's got a really nice colour palette to it with that tiling. The, the you like the blue? Yeah, Matches the like shirt. The yeah. A little bit Leicester Square-ish, isn't it? You know the entrances to Leicester yeah. Square Station? A little bit like that, with a bit of tooting. Tooting? Or clapping, was it, which, which is the one, that, I think it's Tooting Beck, isn't it? It's got that sort of rotunda at the entrance. Yes. Uh. Is it, or is Broadway? Look, that's where it used to be, Earl's Court Exhibition Centre. Yep, that's the road that we just walked under. Thinking about it, you know, there is one possible reason I can think of that may be why there were two exits out to um, Earl's Court. This one and the one downstairs. Was it, and you can help us with this, was it Earl's Court 1 and Earl's Court 2? Were they separate exits for the days when Earl's Court 1 was separate to Earl's Court 2? Two exhibition centres, two exits, it's possible. Otherwise, I'm a bit befuddled. I think avoiding a road crossing is a, is a good idea, isn't it? And you'd just be able to go straight under there and to the other side. Well, it's a, it, it is a handsome... It's cute, isn't it? And if it weren't for the fact that you managed to keep from us that amazing escalator shaft, this would be a very pretty exit to finish the episode on. Yeah. I've got to say, this must be the weirdest uh, underground that I've seen. It's like a little shop front sign. Yes, or yeah. yeah, it's almost like, well, I think it was a kiosk by the look of it. They've just oh. bricked it up at some oh, point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, Amazing, Talking right. Of kiosks, are we going to eat and drink eat at now. any point? Yeah. I think it's what? definitely <laughs> time to, uh, to go and try out the staff canteen, isn't it? Oh. Oh, I was thinking the pub that we start, <laughs> oh well. That was pretty cool, right? That was like um, a film set at the very end of those films. And I think Siddles, we were all a little bit blown away by that because we kind of knew it was there, but we didn't really know what was there. But it was so intact, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And I mean, I think... Um... You know, Earl's Court, like we said in the film, has always been like a, it's, it's a grand, it feels grand in, in certain regards because of that big, you know, big rail shed that you go into and that kind of, as you descend into the station. And then when we went down below ground into the lift shafts, uh, I thought that was it, really. I thought, you know, we'd go and have a look at the other entrance and that sort of was all there was. I mean, Chris really really kept that one fr uh, from us until really we just walked in through it. So, um, yeah, just extraordinary. It's gorgeous. And we have some pictures. And in fact, we've got tons of pictures to show you. So we'll rattle through these because they are all corkers and some posters that for some of our um, Patreons as well, you'll know about the Hidden London Hang Ups, which are our Patreon service. There's an extra episode about Earl's Court just for you guys. Uh, more details about that on the London Transport Museum's website. But look at that already. I mean, this is the view that we had presumably, guys, from across the road from the pub. Is this is this the same frontage? So this is the building that opened after the first one burnt down. Right. So the one that opened in 1875 and then caught fire, that one, it, that on the other side of the road where we stood by the pub, that yeah. one burned down. This is the one that opened. So this is in in the place where the current facade is now. But yeah. they rebuilt that when the, as you say, the pickly dickly line Pickly -dickly. came through. Yeah. And I mean, Lord, looking at the brickwork and everything else, it is... It's a very elegant looking station, a bit sort of, a bit Marlborough Road. Does that make a bit of sense? A little no. bit roadish. Yeah. I was just about to say that I like everything that's going on, the brickwork, the um, tall kind of archways, the lights that you can see there, those three lovely lights at the front, the Earl's Court um, lettering, the pillars on top. Um, I'm just, I'm loving it. It's a, it's a, it's a gorgeous picture. Gorgeous. Chuck another one out of this, Nixie. 
I was just about to say it's giving me slight vibes of Gloucester Road. Uh, if you remember the the two buildings yeah. that when we went to when we yeah. went to do that. Although I do think Gloucester Road Station is chaotic to look at. You've got so many bits and bobs stuck together, but I mean, at least that looks. I think it looks really cool. It's almost like a little castle. Um, let's have another one. Ooh, Speaking of chaos, up. have a look down on the platform. So this is somewhere between in the early 1900s. This shot, and uh, we talk all time about this on the Hangouts about the chaos of advertising back then. But that one's a particularly good example. How cool is that? Close, close. Well, I love it. It's beautiful. On we go. Then let's have a look at another building. So here we are, 1907. Uh, it's, yeah, it's quite a simple affair, this end of the station, isn't it? So which end is that? That would be the exhibition centre end. That's right. Yeah. Wow. What Because that's now the Charles Holden end, isn't it? That sort of, I don't know, like a flying saucers shape thing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's the Warwick, the Warwick Road end. But actually, it does have some quite posh bits to it. Those lamps are quite fancy. And that on the entrance where the big sign saying Earls Court Station, District Railway and Piccadilly Tube is, that ironwork's fairly fancy on the end of it. But it is I was very much just simpler. about to say the same thing, Chris. And what, do you know what I like about this as well? Like normally, I like things that are kind of quite matchy-matchy. But the lamp's kind of uh, triangular and then you've got the triangle of the left hand building with the lovely kind of fancy ironwork. And then you've got the curvature of the Earl's Court station side. And even though they're kind of like really different shapes, I actually think it really works really nicely together. And you've got this really lovely comic chimney as well that looks like it's off some sort of cartoon, doesn't it? <laughs> it does look <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit like a kebab shop to me, that one. Yes. <laughs> so uh, here's another view of uh, the entranceway. And that's the one we recognise now, really, isn't it? That's yeah, and you can see it's, it's actually pretty authentic today, isn't it, when you look at that? West End Railways. Is that right? West. Yeah. Where are you looking? At the very top of that hoop. Oh, yes. yes, yes. West yes. End Railway. City What's end that? Railway. I think it's City and West End Railways. That's yeah. what that looks like. Is that new? I've never heard of that. Mm. But well, these... they're trying all sorts of things, aren't they? <laughs> I love also the fact that the name Thomas was always um, shortened to Thos. <laughs> It's um, this one is a shot from 1916, uh, and it's although the businesses have changed uh, since then, uh, that facade is still recognisably very similar, isn't it? Yeah, you can still get your packet sandwiches in boots, so that's all good. Uh, lovely. Oh and my you... goodness! Right, I, <laughs> great to include this just to see the sheer volume of people. But do you notice if we just zoom in? Do you see? what it's advertising there. Moving stairway to Piccadilly Railway. Brilliant. Before they were referred to as escalators. <laughs> and that's, your, that's your escalators. It, isn't it amazing as well how they never lost a trick when it came to advertising? They're literally <laughs> under the platform as well. They could not literally have given you any more promotional messages in one eyeball. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, and also um, this just reminds me of when you try to get home after work and there's no Wimbledon line on <laughs> and Wimbledon train at Earl's Court. Yeah. Uh, but the Olympia, Olympia shuttle that never turns up. The Olympia shuttle. We're still waiting for the Olympia shuttle. I thought the northbound northern line from London Bridge at 7.30 a.m. was bad. This is... Uh, <laughs> this is <laughs> Uh, amazing. I'm also just going to point out on the advertising front a welcome return from our friend Bovril. Bovril. In the background there. Hey. Uh, for those Shout of you who Bovril. like to play bingo with the advertising, uh, we know who you are, Laura. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love I, how I, smart they look so smart in their coats and hats. It's just an era that I just like the fashion fascinates me. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? What a moment in yeah. time. Next. Yeah. So this is the this is the entrance that we went in first, wasn't it? Yeah, Head, headline advertiser Colt Coltar Soap gets the over the perimeter advertising. Absolutely love it. Next, well, we've got a cheeky little um, oh. illustration here, just to give you a sense of what it might have been like in colour. It's beautiful, isn't it? It was a nice fine city that one. 
Addison Road. What is, was that Olympia? What was yeah, Addison that's Road? Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's had a few names in its life. But yeah. yeah. Addison Road. Addison Road Olympia. That's amazing. So Should with the Olympia. Going out to the theatre. Yeah. I mean, look at the pink outfit she's wearing. She, in fact, she looks like she's wearing the plastic off the dry cleaners outfit at the top and bottom. <laughs> oh. um, this um, was her, her finest for her West End theatre show. That is gorgeous. So yeah. this, this dates from 1912. Oh. Um, and oh it's by goodness. an artist called Yoshio Marquino. And uh, it's, it really does capture the moment, doesn't it? The, uh, if you look on the right-hand side, the, the train gives you a clue as well with those older style wooden mm. body, clerestory, roofed uh, uh, cars there. Next. So <laughs> we, of course... Uh, mentioned on the film that Earl's Court is known for being uh, a station that you used to go to the exhibition centre when it was there. And uh, I really like this map because it, it gives you a sense of the scale uh, as well as the position of the Earl's Court uh, exhibition centre there, sort of caught between the various tracks and depots of the underground in that triangle. Um, it is, yeah, but it's also the shape of the, I never knew the exhibition centre was effectively a triangle. Yeah. And I, you, you may remember that uh, when we were down at the station, I mentioned one of the famous uh, skyline landmarks that uh, was there uh, briefly at the at the exhibition centre and Sydney managed to find you a photo of it. Uh, oh, oh well, wow. The, the Great wow. Wheel mm. in 1906. Yeah, so what a great picture. Yeah, really great. Um, this is that great wheel, and this is as you're descending into Earl's Court, basically. You're going coming from Baron, Baron's Court in West Kensington into Earl's Court. And you can even see the back of those houses today when you travel through that, which is amazing. But this is just before that wheel gets... Um, it's demolished so it's it's demolished in the end of 1906 now, because of the uh, presence of the exhibition center it meant that Earl's Court was a great muse for poster artists for the underground so we've got a wealth of posters in our collection that um that refer to exhibitions that were going on at uh, at the center there nice big Dunlop tire yeah, uh, this is a friend that we know well on the show, Edward McKnight Cowfer, um, one of the poster legends uh, for the underground and a very striking bit of work as usual from him. And he, and he did, Law, manage to create artwork that looked like photographs. I mean, that tyre looks like a photo. Yeah, it's, it's exceptionally clever, isn't it? And I like the uh, kind of set, sense of depth and perspective that you get from this as well so you you kind of feel the movement of the tire even though it's you know a 2d picture um and i i do like the use of color as well um i think it kind of makes again it adds to that sense of depth in the in the overall poster but it's just a note on that from, sorry i was just gonna say it's extraordinary that this is from 1937 isn't it this one's 37 isn't it it is 1937 yeah that's so modern looking to me. Do you know what I mean? Like that, I, if somebody told me that's from 1978, I'd be like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and that's exactly right. The technique that you've picked up on there, we'd refer to today as mixed media, where you've got uh, the illustration and then the photo in there. But that was actually quite an advanced technique. It had, uh, in the 30s, when a lot of um, Eastern European artists were fleeing uh, the rise of, of uh, Nazism uh, in that part of the world. A lot of those artists came to to Britain and brought those ideas with them. So this is uh, this is a classic advanced bit of work from the 30s uh, of that photograph as part of an illustration. And law, it's that whole thing about purity of colour again, isn't it? The way that also there's no apostrophe on Earl's Court, I spot, but also the tube, the the actual roundel, red and blue, is it, it feels fresh doesn't it that poster yeah i mean if, if you th yes i do you know what i like that it's two very good words fresh and pure um there's really only kind of like four colors in it um and the yellow really kind of makes it pop as well but it, it looks like some kind of silk scheme like prints doesn't it it looks like um a, a kind of print rather than um paint but um Lith lith lithographic print there you go there you go I love the word, isn't but it? i think oh, um... 
yeah, the, the kind of use of minimal color, but um, the, the colors that have been chosen, just it's really easy to read, um, but then really kind of enjoyable to look at too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And if you if you like that and you want to know more about that printing process of lithography, um, it, it's and also learn how to say it. It's <laughs> uh, we've got our new poster gallery opening uh, at the museum, uh, so go along, have at it. Um, that's our new uh, changing temporary exhibition. The, I like that uh, phrase, have at it. Uh, meanwhile, at the Warwick Ooh. Road end, this is that entrance when it was it was you know really brand new. This is uh, 1937. Uh, and looks pretty, pretty slick, doesn't it? Do you know what? This is how long it is as a station because you've got the, the engine shed, then you've got that extendy bit that where you can walk along the balcony bit, then you cross over and come down to Warwick Road. It's a huge station, isn't it? Massive footprint. That's one sole person in front of the, po the posters as well, just to give you a bit of kind of perspective on size as well. Just making a decision as to whether or not he was going to have the gin, then have a wrigglers to clear his. Uh, Breath, yeah, I think that's that's the best way what, around. What before taking his Morris for uh, yeah, serving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a different time. <laughs> so now, of course, this is 1937, uh, and it's not many years after this that uh, any underground spaces that weren't being used were going to be needed for wartime effort, for sheltering, or for other purposes. Now, uh, all the while that we were down. Uh, looking around the station, there was one little secret which I didn't let on, which was actually my reason for wanting to go there, because uh, about 18 months ago, I came across a set of photos which showed how those passageways that were built in the 30s were reused during wartime. Now, you remember the central line wasn't finished during the war, and that got used for the Plessy factory to build electronics, particularly for aircraft. What else caught? They did something similar. They set up what was known as a spare time factory where uh, staff from London Transport who had spare time, um, people working in reserved occupations during the day, would um, come and give their free time to make things for the war effort. I think yeah. that's about binding that photograph. I mean, Seddles... This is, as, you, as, as Nixie said, this was more than one location where this was going on. But people could basically go along when they had some time and help out in the war effort, making stuff, fixing stuff, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine the people there having, you know, be working for some sort of, you know, aircraft manufacturer or something like that. But it's just extraordinary because I was going through all these images yesterday and Chris hadn't told us anything about it when we were visiting. And then as I was sort of scrolling through, I went, what, what, is that a central line one? And and just because I saw a little small vignette of it. And then this is what it is. It's just extraordinary. The, the it, it never ceases to amaze me how I think I actually know pretty much all there is to know about something, you know, like we're... we're the underground was used during the Second World War, and then you find something like this. It's extraordinary. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And we've got one more to look at, haven't we? We do. I, I think the thing which I found remarkable about these is that usually when you see wartime production factories, of course, it's almost all women working in them. Yeah. Uh, because um, the, you know, the, generally the male workforce uh, was off fighting. But if you were either not a fighting age or in a reserved occupation, of course, you could come along uh, and work here. And so here you've got a great shot, obviously in that passageway we were in, where you've got both male and female workers busy at the, at the vices making things. Incredible. We moan about going to work on a Monday morning, don't we? We, are, we don't know we're born. We do not know we're born. Um, it's very sort of makeshift as well, Laura, isn't it? A lot of wires and lights hanging down off hooks and things like that. It's 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 so temporary, but yet it was serving such a vital purpose in the war. Yeah, I mean, you've, hit, you've just hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's got a very temporary feel to it. But thank goodness it was temporary because obviously it means that kind of we came we came out the other side positively. But it's, it's so, like Siddy was saying before, it's so strange sometimes and I, I can't quite articulate um into the words that I want how 
it makes me feel that we've stood in some of these spaces and what's kind of happened before and the poignancy and importance of what's happened before as well. I know we were joking about the platform being really busy um, earlier on and that it was, you know, equally as busy then as well. But then, you know, you, you see a shot like this and it just it just makes my heart feel like how the sense of camaraderie and pulling together and how amazing these people were at this time and that you see this sh like shot and that just oozes out of it it's just it's got that feeling of um just pulling together and getting stuff done and I just I absolutely love it totally totally and it's only now we know how long that tunnel is and if you imagine that was entirely full of people working that's that's pretty mind-blowing, isn't it? It's really? epic. It's just epic, yeah. Gorgeous stuff. What a beautiful set of photographs. See, I was wrong. Yeah, well was done, wrong. you two. Wrong. The people. Gorgeous stuff. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for coming back for Series 8. Uh, as you know, at the end of some of our episodes, we have... Um, and I can't believe it, 8. Series 8. I know, I was just like, 8, and then I'm not on screen, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> um, we've got notes, queries, and questions. So if you've got any questions about the Tube or any comments to make about the episodes, write them below on YouTube, and then we can read out some of the, the, the most wonderful ones. I, Sasha X, you'll love this, kids. Wow, I've now discovered these after being a Secrets of the London Underground fan, Siddles. Now I need to watch as much as I can. Good stuff indeed. Thanks from Valencia in Spain. Who fancies oh, That's so cool. Um, I, Ben and I secretly want to move to Valencia in a few years. Do you know? Secret yeah. Okay, well, it's not a secret anymore. I just told you guys. <laughs> so we've yeah. got more series to do on this one, love. Don't go anywhere yet. It's bad enough I'm in Portugal and I might be missing out. We'll on be doing it from her little, uh, her place in Valencia. We'll be in Portugal. Be in city I'll have to go to Madrid and Barcelona to uh, to bring us an underground. Yeah, too right. In Madrid, there's even, a, there's a metro in Valencia. I can't imagine there must much, it's much disused there, but you know. It's gorgeous. Um, Kiwi Hiking Club says walking down those tunnels is like all the horror movies ever made combined into a single scene. The tunnels you visit are scary. It's absolutely true, isn't it? I mean, sometimes we do, if you'll pardon the expression, give ourselves the willies by what we see and where we go. It can be very dark, very gloomy, but also kind of really exciting at the same time. Think about South Kentish Town or somewhere like that. That really made the hair on the back of your neck stand up, didn't it? Yeah, incredibly uh, dramatic, lively space, isn't it? Gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous stuff. Loads of other comments. We'll come to them through um, the uh, course of Series 8 as well. As I say, keep comments coming down below. Um, thank you very much, as always. So that was first episode back. And, of course, one final thing. Over the summer, the four of us took to the boards. We were on stage uh, for a very, very special Hidden London Hangout. Uh, at the London Transport Museum's own theatre. Who knew? They've got a theatre down there. And um, some of our uh, lovely loyal fans came along and watched us um, muck around on stage as we toured around Liverpool Street, which in itself is an amazing station. Uh, Law, it was quite an experience for all of us, really, wasn't it? I think, it, well, it definitely was. And I know um, it was a, a little bit of a kind of... Um, leap of faith which we've referenced to the hangouts kind of before we didn't know if the format was going to work or if people were going to buy tickets um but it was a really really special evening and i think um from people arriving at the beginning to the four of us kind of doing a live what we're doing now like zoom recording but it was on stage and then meeting and chatting to people afterwards it was um it was a really really lovely evening and i just hope the people that are uh, were there enjoyed it as well and you never know we might do another one. Oh my goodness the 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 roundel we've got a hangouts roundel made by aj wells it's so exciting and city i mean you are the expert of treading the boards you are the celeb kitten even you were a bit kind of like oh what's this going to be like yeah well i think it was just um you know you always kind of you hope that people are going to enjoy what you're doing and we'd never done that before so there's just a lot of um I didn't really think anything would go wrong and I really thought we would um we would really enjoy it and the audience would enjoy it but um I didn't quite expect it to be as exhilarating and as kind of intimate and feeling like a family as it was it felt like just sitting around with uh, a group of friends which was really lovely 
gorgeous, wasn't it? And I, we were saying on at the time, normally when we make these episodes for you, we don't know what you find funny. We don't know what you go wow to. It was so nice to have our audience there going wow and smiling at what we say. That was really lovely. And Nixie, our mole on the management, um, apparently they were quite happy and we were up for them doing more of these. Oh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely have a redo. Uh, and if you didn't get to come along on this one, well, keep a lookout for it next time. And uh, if you'd like to join our Patreon uh, scheme, then you would be able to catch up with that one uh, at a later date. Uh, and also, if you haven't had your fill of uh, Earl's Cool, well, we've got more stuff for the Patreon hang up. Um, so head on over to the Patreon site and enjoy some more of us. Fabulous stuff. All details are on the London Transport Museum website. That is episode one for series eight, done and dusted. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Nix. You are fantastic as ever. Oh, well, thank you. Great to be back. Uh, onwards into ever more exciting places. Siddles, I don't know what that poster is on your wall, but it looks gorgeous, as you are too. <laughs> Thanks so much. I really love this. So happy to be back. And what a banger. We, we started with a banger. Oh, absolutely. And Laura Hilton Brown, thank you. As always, gorgeous. You are wonderful. Tooting. <laughs> I know. I haven't I haven't had it up there for ages. It was it was actually a little nostalgic, which sounds like ridiculous, to be putting the set back together because it's been a while. Um the four of us have luckily hung out a little bit over the summer, recorded some episodes, did the hangout live, etc. But I am enjoying seeing your faces on my screen again. What a nice way to start my day. As always, find us on Instagram, Alex Grunt and Chris Nick, City Holloway, Hidden London Law and at LT Museum. You found us on YouTube. Thank you. Like, subscribe and comment down below. And we'll read those out in future notes, queries and questions. And we'll be back somewhere really, really cool very, very soon indeed. In the meantime, have yourself a great day and stay safe.